uh, this is terrific. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to pray first, obviously. Boy, we're meeting some people tonight. It's just such a blessing to say hi to some of uh, our dear friends and some that we have, uh, are now in other Bible study classes or attending on Sundays. We haven't seen them for a while. Like our good brother Ricardo sitting back here in the back. And, uh, we always get to see him. And uh, we got some guests here tonight, two, two, several, I don't even, I can't even start to remember their names, I apologize for that. Uh, but at any rate, welcome. Uh, Thank you. So uh, this is the most important uh, thing, is just welcoming and being with one another and having a blessing and fellowship and serving Jesus and being His hands and feet. And what a spread. Wow. <laughs> So, let's do this. I want everybody at the tables, if you grab, just hold your hands, hold hands. Everybody at the table, hold hands. There we go, everybody. You got it. Where is she? Where's my wife? Where's Marty? Where's Joe? Where's Joe? There's Joe. Joe's got to grab a table. Joe, grab my hand, Joe. I'm not a bad guy. Joe, Joe's uh, our brother Joe, who's also the manager of our class. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, lift our blessing up to the Lord. Heavenly Father, wow, we're just so excited to be here in your presence because you said wherever two or three are gathered in your midst, that you're going to be here. So, Lord, we welcome you. We know you're already here in our midst. And, boy, we're just so excited to have you with us and Lord, we just came off of a wonderful message and penetrates our heart. And now we focus on our good friends and doing supper with you. So Lord, I just ask a special blessing on the food tonight that you'll provide it for the nourishment of our bodies that we can better serve you. We not only ask a blessing on the food, we ask a blessing on everyone who provided it. And Lord, we just ask that You'll touch people's lives tonight, and that you'll have that there'll be a smile and there'll be a, a welcome arm and a welcome hand. And, and sometimes, you know, we we're struggling with different thoughts and different ideas and just different problems. And we know tonight we can lay them at the foot of your cross. So, Lord, we love you. We celebrate you, and it's in your precious name we pray. And all God's children loudly and proudly said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to start. We'll start. Here's, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with this table over here. You guys can go ahead and hit the Can your table come up, please? Lynn, Lynn, will we pick your plate? No, she's good. Amen.
sides to the table, so there's two sides to the table. head coach. <laughs> coach Golden is gone as well with the Hurricanes coach. He's gone. Hurricanes won two in a row since he's gone. So, um, and what a miraculous uh, last second play that they pulled off, even though uh, they said it wasn't even close But anyhow, why does Thanksgiving matter? Being with your... Why? The question is, why does Thanksgiving matter? So we're going to, we're going to talk about that because God talks about that. Yep, Pilgrim started it all here. So one day, as the story goes, Jesus encountered thanklessness. Rather than Thanksgiving. Now, this wasn't a parable, by the way. This isn't a parable. This is a. He's telling about what happened when he was on his way. He was walking from Samaria to Galilee, and hey, Mary. Samaria, as you know, was um, a place where a lot of people, particularly the Israelites, did not like them. 
And as he's walking uh, through the through the countryside, he happens. It starts, in, and this is in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. And you may be familiar with the story. It talks about the ten lepers that he heals. Now, starting in verse 11, now it happens as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of the borders of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, they met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Leprosy, as you know, maybe you don't know, was a very it was a it was a it was a terrible disease. It infected your skin. Um, it also had other complications. And if you had leprosy, a lot of people in that day you could not live in the community. You could not live in the village, so to speak. You had to be outside. You had to be in a community of your own. And when you were walking up on other people, if you had leprosy, you had to shout it out, unclean, unclean, to let other people know. And it was also at that time where people thought it was God's way of penalizing you for sin. So these ten men, they stood up and they saw Jesus coming and they said, have mercy on us. Now they had nothing to lose. Here comes Jesus, and they figure, hey, this is the guy that heals the blind. He's the guy that uh, makes people walk. He's the guy that, that raises people from the dead. So what do they got to lose? They have nothing to lose. The verse 14 says, when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now the reason he said that is he's referring back to the book of Leviticus because in that day with the priests they were sort of like your first century referees. They would pronounce if you were uh, clean and that you were able to go back and live within the community. So he says go, show yourself to the priests. They were looking for that good housekeeping seal of approval that only the priest could give. Oh, okay. yeah. Will they go? Because if they do go, this was now a trial of what? This is a trial of obedience. And if Jesus says to you, go, do you go? Because now it's a trial of obedience. Am I going to obey? Or am I going to say, I don't know if I can handle it. I think you picked the wrong more person. So we, it's, a, it's, an, it's an obedient question. Well, they do go. And the verse goes on to say, And so it was that as they went, they were cleaned or cleansed. Notice the progression here. As they went... They were cleansed. Their obedience cleansed them because of their faith. Because they said, we're going to be obedient. We're going to go get talk to the priests. While they were walking there, I think this is fantastic. And I think it's easy to overlook this. That while they were going, they were cleansed. The, the obedience proceeded the healing. So the question is, does your obedience proceed the healing? But Jesus says, as one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He was the one that was not very well thought of. Now until that point, if you think about it, the ten guys, they hung out together. 
They, they, they cried out together to Jesus. They lived together. They were in agony together. And as they were walking to the priest, when they were healed, only one of them turned and went back to Jesus to give him thanks. First, he sees. Second, he returns. And third, he praises. Isn't that us? When we pray for something earnestly, and God answers our prayer, and we see the cleansing, we first receive. Then we return, and we give Him the glory. Amen. Amen. So Jesus answered him, and here's the hard part, because He's going to hit him with three tough questions. I mean, rapid fire. Jesus goes right back at it. It sort of takes a little bit of the glory away and the praise away because Jesus says at this point, he says, Jesus answered and said, question number one, were there not ten that was clean? Question number one, you're here. What happened to the other nine? Question number two, but where are the nine? Question number three, were they not any found who returned to him to give glory to God except the foreigner? So Jesus asked him, this is great, but where are the other nine? And why are you the only one that came back to give praise and glory to God? Now let me ask you a question. Doesn't, I couldn't help but think of that. He, he rewarded their obedience, but he wanted something else. Because if you think about it, is, 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 is Jesus being childish? Is he saying, i got to have the glory here? I want to make sure that God gets the glory? Of course not. He wanted something more. He wanted gratitude. We have to, it's being grateful for who God is and what God is in and through our lives. Gratefulness is knowing awareness that we are the recipients of goodness. The nine who did not give thanks were not only rude, they were maligned. They were lost. We are the recipients of goodness. We're not the creator of goodness. We're the recipients. Given that fact, praise and thankfulness is really not an option, is it? So when we come to the table, we dine together, we thank God together, we give Him the praise and the glory for what He's done in and through our lives. And sometimes the blessings we don't acknowledge because we take it for granted. Every one of us here, most of us, if not all of us, we're all going to get up in a few minutes and we're going to walk out of here. Except for this guy. You still want to be in this chair. You thank God for that. My dad used to say when we were kids growing up, I cried because I had no shoes until I saw the man who had no feet. There are so many things that we take for granted. But we want to give him the praise and glory if we got our job, if we got our raise, if we got our home, if we got our car, but we forget sometimes the blessings that are all around us that money can't buy, like our eyesight, like the legs that we can walk on and run with, 
the children that we can hold that Irwin's got back there. And be, put a blessing on them and watch them and nurture them and bring them up. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He told that to the Samaritan, the outcast, the low life. I wonder how the other nine felt when he caught up to him and said, I went back and I praised God and I thanked him. I thanked Jesus. The grateful man was not only was he healed like the other nine, but he got one more, he got one more perk out of the deal. His faith was cemented. When Jesus said, you go now. He didn't say this the other night because they didn't come back. Your faith has made you well. And Jesus is saying that to everybody here tonight. If you are a Christ follower, Jesus saying, go now. Your faith has made you well. No matter what burden you may be carrying, what struggle you may be dealing with. Your faith has made you well. And that's a promise. Gratitude brings benefits into this world and into your life. That's just absolutely amazing. It's awesome. Because we're grateful and we're thankful for what we have. So I'm asking you, prayerful that this Thanksgiving when you sit at your table we'll first think of the families across this great country that won't have somebody sitting at their table because their son or daughters somewhere in this world protecting us maybe they've already paid the ultimate price of freedom But you sit around your table and you, this is a time to embrace, this is a time to love, this is a time to be thankful. And appreciate and be grateful all that Christ has done for you. And by the way, I know we always say, and he loves you so much he even went to the cross. And that's true, he did. But the gifts just keep on giving. When he came off the cross, that's when it all started. It wasn't the fact that he went to the cross. It was the fact that he came off the cross. And that's his promise to each and every one of us. That we are going to live beyond the grave. Is that exciting or what? If there's nothing else to be thankful for, I am mean, thankful for that. We're, you know, I always say, you know, Christians, you know, we're, you know, you can't kill us. We're like toast. You put it up, pop, we pop right back up. <laughs> You know, absence of the body, we're present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I mean, goodness gracious, and why somebody wants to deny that, I have no idea. But they're in the land of lost, and that's why we have to talk to them and say, hey, this is good stuff, and it's all true. So when we are thankful, when you take inventory, the Bible teacher is so, so much more. So we're going to close on this note. Let's give thanks to the Holy One. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And uh, we look forward, if you like, uh, for all the visitors and the guests tonight, if you'd like to come hang out with us every Saturday night, we're here. We, we push the envelope. We try to get in trouble. And we do a good job of it. And we're good at that. And, uh, and we're celebrating the month of November birthdays next week. And uh, you're, you're late.
<laughs> if you were in October, you're late. <laughs> well, I was in June. Did really? <laughs> but listen, uh, love somebody, be the hands of the king. Let people see the love of Jesus Christ through you this holiday season. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless. And I just want to remind everybody that next week is uh, Joe's night, catered here, two dollars, and birthdays, celebrations. That's Woo! next Saturday, okay? All right, guys, have a great week. God bless.
good. How are you? Thank you. 
And then he's, and he declared he's going to be dating when he comes back. Did he say that even in front of you? Did he say to other people? Whatever that means. So, I don't know. So, hey, look, That's some man. have to trip me or hit me over the head with something. Sure, sure. From me, the outside looking in, I can see potential. That's all. <laughs> I see more trepidation for him. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. oh, there will be dragons past this point. This point he should be thinking. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.